once again, my name is Melissa. Welcome to Mount Movers, Mount Movers community, which you're involved with here, but I'm really going to encourage you to join us live on our Wednesday calls. These are great because, you know, you can come as you please. You can, you know, listen record, uh, to the recording. But on Wednesday nights, we actually do a lot of prayer and deliverance. We do a lot of Q&A. So I'm going to really tell you there's a bigger benefit to coming live than just listening to something reposted. There's something about anointing when the body of Christ gets together and we're talking in one accord and in unity of the things of the Lord where the anointing is really, really powerful. So if uh, you can come on Wednesday, and here's what I'm telling women in this season, and I'm just going to speak to you right here as my sister. There is a lot that the world is planning against us. There's a lot. I'm not going to go with there, but you can look at the news yourself. We have voluntary lockdowns all over the East Coast regarding mosquitoes. Can you imagine a little mosquito this big giving us so many issues when God says that we have the ability and the power to trample on scorpions and to drink anything deadly and it will not hurt us? And we're concerned about a mosquito this big. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But the enemy disguises himself as something very small, a cancer cell, a mosquito. And this is why we have to have the power of God. This is why we have to have the word of God, the knowledge of God. Um, and I'm, I'm, mosquitoes are attracted to me. They just are. I don't know if it's blood type. I don't really care why they are. But I told Ryan yesterday, I said, in the name of Jesus, if I see a mosquito, I'll rip its wings off. Stomp it, kill it, whatever I need to do. Because the, the, the media, the news, all these outlets use a lot of fear to instill fear. And that's what they're really trying to do. They're trying to get us all worked up about the next pandemic, about the next mosquito, about the next monkeypox stuff. So if we're out there really in the news and we're watching the news, but we're not in God's word enough to overcome and overpower and over influence our mind regarding the news, we're going to be in trouble. So this is why I'm telling all of us as women in the body of Christ, we have to get our word game on. We have to know anchor scripture. We have to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And we really, really, really have to prioritize all of the things that we need to become strong and mature in this season. And it is very difficult for you and I as Christians when we are struggling with pain and health issues and sickness and disease and doctor's visits and protocols and medications and supplement regimens and, and, and. When we are having to spend all of that time, all of that precious time into things that make up the world and the world's wisdom. And we're believing the world and the world's wisdom. How much time does that leave us for the Lord? Hi, Kelly. Good morning. That's awesome. Good morning, Kelly. Let me just ask you a question, Kelly. How much time does that leave us for the word? If I'm spending an hour back and forth at doctors, getting blood work, getting x-rays, getting exams, going to therapists, going to chiropractors, how much time is that really leaving me to build my faith? It says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hi, Amanda. Awesome, Amanda. What a testimony she has. Exactly, Kelly, not much. You said it. Think about it. But let me ask you girls a question because there's going to be tremendous healing today, powerful healing. Healing is the mind first. It's understanding the truth so that the mind can be healed. It's called renewing because the body follows the mind. You want your body well, you better get your mind well. So let me ask you girls a question, a personal question. Yeah, all of that is exhausting. Absolutely. I used to do it and your sister Amanda who's here almost died doing it. Amanda meet Kelly, Kelly meet Amanda. Amanda had a come to Jesus meeting Kelly a couple of days ago. I've had that same come to Jesus meeting. Come to Jesus, not go to Mayo Clinic. Come to Jesus, not go to CVS. I had that come to Jesus me uh, moment myself. Kelly, your sister almost lost her life. The enemy wanted to take her out. No joke. This is personal to me because I love Amanda. Amanda's going through our mentorship program and I'm her backup right? I'm her sister in the Lord. And it says that you can actually get healed and delivered on somebody else's faith as the centurion who prayed for his servant. So it's really important for you girls to have strong believers, 
not carnal Christians praying for you, saying, if it's God's will in your timing, those prayers will kill you. If it's in your will, if it's your timing, can you imagine that? Anybody who's praying that, they are praying from doubt and unbelief, and it will actually hurt the very thing that you are trying to believe God for. God's timing for healing is now. God's timing for the body of Christ to be healed is now because he sees the things that Bill Gates is planning. Bill Gates, he sees way ahead. He knows the beginning from the end, and he is ready, ready, ready to heal and deliver his daughters. Just like you would if you were a mom, and if your daughter or son came into the room and said, I have a headache, I have a stomach ache, would you say, in, your, in my timing, I'm going to heal you. Hey, son and daughter, in my timing. I don't know if it's my will. We have to have beliefs like this will kill you. That's the title of today's uh, Facebook Live. This type of belief will kill you. Can you imagine my daughter coming in? And she's not the most perfect daughter and she's disobedient and she's rebellious. And let's say she doesn't clean her room or do her homework. Would I hold that against her and withhold healing? Kelly, would I withhold healing from my daughter because she didn't do her homework or clean her room? But how many of us have a belief that if we're not walking on eggshells and if we're not perfect, that God is not going to heal us? That somehow we have to do something to get into the good graces we have to get into the good graces for healing. Come on, think about it. Can we just think about that for a second? These mind changes have to be so mind changing that there is a radical shift in our understanding of God. Our understanding of God gives us the ability to have faith in God, to trust God, to believe God for healing. If we don't know God for who he is, we can't trust him for what we want him to do, for what he's already done. And this is why these beliefs are killing the body of Christ. If we are sitting in lukewarm churches and they're not teaching truths like this, get the heck out of that church because I've been challenged to leave churches many times. I don't sacrifice fellowship with Christians over my belief in God. I will sacrifice fellowship with other believers to maintain my belief in God. And there's a lot of things in churches that are not being disclosed. I'm not even saying they're doing it purposely. They're not doing it purposely. They are literally trying to feed the sheep. Ashley Ledford, that's a false belief that we have to, yes, exactly, Ashley, exactly. I would never, if my daughter disobeyed me, Ashley, would I get a vial of AIDS and inject it in her? Would I get a vial of disease and say, you are disobedient and rebellious and you're not perfect? What kind of parent would inject sickness, would cause sickness, would want sickness for their children? It makes no, that's abuse. That is horrific, physical, mental, and emotional abuse. But we believe these same things regarding the Lord. There is a belief in the body of Christ that says, until I have every door closed, until I know every truth, I'm not qualified. And that is another belief. We have to get rid of these beliefs so we can get rid of the sickness because beliefs cause sickness and beliefs can bring healing. No way, love doesn't withhold what is good for their children, only what is to their detriment. Precisely, spoken like a mighty believer, not a comfortable, cute, quaint, conditioned uh, Christian. See, this is why I love Mount Movers, because of women like you. You get it. Now, I know we don't get every truth, so I get that too. But you get it because you're here. On Labor Day, while well, everybody's celebrating, which is awesome, I hope you go out right after this teaching and go celebrate and have the greatest time. But in this season, if we are not prioritizing our understanding of God in order to receive healing and deliverance, and they close all of the urgent cares, and they do lockdowns, and you are dependent on anything other than Christ, those Christians are not going to make it. Guess who is going to make it? Kelly, Amanda, Ashley, women like us, we're going to make it. And guess what? The world's going to need us to make it, right? The world is going to need you and I to make it. The world is going to need you and I to be healed. The, the world is going to need you and I to know the word. 
The world is going to need you and I to lay hands on the sick. See? This is important, and we have to get ready. And I say this in love, and I have no fear. But you know who needs us? All those people on the East Coast that are getting stung with mosquitoes and are hiding from mosquitoes. Can you imagine Ashley hiding from a mosquito? That's what's happening on the East Coast. Can you imagine us that have the power of God and we're hiding from mosquitoes and we're afraid to go out at night? We're not hiding from vampires or zombies. <laughs> you know, I'm giving you dumb examples. We're hiding from a mosquito, really? The body of Christ is not out there saying no mosquito formed against me. We're not swatting mosquitoes off of us and saying, you wanna take my blood, go ahead because I have the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, mosquito, suck on that blood because I'm guarded by the blood of Jesus. How's that? I bet you a mosquito wouldn't even come to inches to you if we really believe that the blood we don't have the blood of jesus in us that's dumb but we are covered and protected by the understanding and revelation of the blood of jesus so if that mosquito wants to prick into my skin the revelation that i have is going to make sure that that weapon that weapon does not work amen ashley exactly had this very conversation Perfect. Wonderful. And that's why we're having this conversation. Look, I'm willing to change everything on my Saturday to have a deep conversation with just you women. Perfect. Let's have this small little party of fellowship between us so that you can get the revelation and then you can go spread the revelation. I'm going to tell you, get on our Wednesday calls. You know, there was a woman that you're going to meet on when, that's coming to a future call, and you'll know when it is if you're on our newsletter. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter, okay? She got healed of stage three cancer, and that's my topic today. So let's go ahead and talk about that. But I'm going to use a reference from the woman with the issue of blood that is talked about in three gospels. It's talked about in all, four, in all three gospels minus Luke. Don't say, oh, I've heard that story a hundred times. No, we haven't, because if we've heard that story, we're not afraid of mosquitoes. That's not true. We have to realize where we're at in our walk so we can take an inventory and not out of shame or regret or anything like that. But we have to say, you know what? I don't know enough about canning vegetables. I need to learn a method because when I'm canning, my vegetables are going sour or they're spoiling. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, Lord, in this season, I need a lot deeper understanding of healing because I don't get it. I don't understand the depth of some of the stories I'm reading in the Bible. Do you know that deep calls unto deep, but most of us are shallow hell Christians. We read the word very shallow and the word lands on a shallow heart. We read to get over with. We read, let me go read a chapter so I feel like I've done something. And we have no depth. That seed of that word can't even go in because when we're reading a story in the Bible, like the woman with the issue of blood, we don't even understand how she got healed. She healed herself. Jesus didn't heal her. <gasps> Melissa, that is not true. It is a hundred percent true. Jesus didn't heal her. She healed herself. See, I'm not taking anything away from Jesus. I'm telling you how she got healed. Every single person that got healed in the word of God, got healed differently. In one occasion, Jesus picked up a person. Faith without works is dead. Stand up and take your mat. A centurion servant was healed long distance. The woman healed herself. Do you know that Jesus didn't even know she got healed herself? Go read the three accounts. He turned around and said, who touched me? If he knew that he had healed her, why would he ask a dumb question like that? Has anybody thought about that? Come on, you're my sisters in Christ. Did, was God all-knowing or was he trying to give us a revelation about healing? He turned around and said, who touched me? And the apostle said, Lord, the crowds are in. We can't tell. The anointing is here, ladies. The anointing is here. This is not a feeling. There's no gold dust. I don't see a unicorn or a rainbow. I'm telling you, the anointing, when the power of the word is being spoken, and we have women like you that are in one accord and Kelly's amening it, the anointing is here. 
not because I'm giving you this truth. It's because the truth is being given. You're receiving the truth and together collectively as sisters, this truth is working in the spirit realm. Right now, this truth is working on your behalf and you're going to experience loads and loads and loads of healing and deliverance. I promise you, because it says when the word is preached, that signs and things confirm the actual word that is being preached. If the word is being preached, there is freedom. If the word is being preached, minds are being renewed. The seed is being sown deeply on good ground. Never, ever listen to a word ever. If that word is not changing something, if you're listening to something on YouTube and there is no change, why listen to it? There's no power in it. Amen. So the reason this word is hitting us so deeply and me right now too, is because my sisters are here. My believing sisters are here. Praise God, Amanda. Praise God. Yes, exactly. Praise God. You know what? Praise him for his truth. The woman with the issue of blood healed herself. Let's talk about that. See, that's a belief that we don't understand. Lord, heal me. Lord, I'm waiting for you to heal me. Lord, 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 Lord. And we're up here because we're reading scripture wrong. Well, it says I need to pray and I need to go lay hands. And I need to go get the anointing oil. And everything we're doing is on works. Works, 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 works. And then the, the thing we do that the devil gets us to do, which is the worst part of our, all, is when we're not being healed, we give the devil two of his favorite questions. Here they are. Why isn't it working? And what am I doing wrong? Can I get a huge Yes, that is true. That's what I used to do. Why isn't what I'm doing working? And what am I doing wrong? Anybody ever go their mind in their mind? I'm doing, I'm doing, what am I doing wrong? The devil loves those questions because it puts all the blame on you. And he is a blame shifter because he's a narcissist. He's a blame shifter. He'll say, yep, exactly. You have open doors. You have too much sin. You're not reading enough. You know why? Because he's the accuser of what you do too much of. That is wrong. And what you're not doing enough of. That is right. In this ear. Hey, Amanda, you're not doing this. You're not doing this. You're not doing this. And in this year, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. One's the accuser, you're not doing, and one's the liar, you need to do. Can you imagine, can you imagine, Tracy, having two, whisper, two liars speaking to your ears? You're not reading the Bible enough. You're supposed to be fasting. You got mad at your husband. You said a cuss word. You haven't been praying in your prayer closet. There's no such thing as a prayer closet. Works of the flesh. No such thing as a prayer closet. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying there's no biblical evidence to a prayer closet. Your prayer closet is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Here's your closet. Here's your closet, ladies. No need to go in the dark and work yourself up. What are you not doing in regards to your healing? The devil's favorite question and he'll give you a list you want a list you want a list about this long get ready he's going to give you a list and he's going to keep adding to the list or or what are you not doing or you're doing this too much you're not doing this but you're watching tv too much you're going out too much see he loves that and if we fall with those questions those are beliefs that will keep us sick because it puts all of the emphasis on us and on me, right? Instead of getting that and reflecting it back to Jesus. Thank you, enemy, for bringing up all the things that you're trying to get me to do. Thank goodness Jesus already fulfilled all of those things. God has already fulfilled all of those things in Jesus. Guess what, devil? God fulfilled the law and the requirements of the law 
in Jesus. So you are not going to put me under the law. In fact, I'm not going to read a chapter of the Bible to show you exactly how much faith I have in Jesus Christ, because I'm just going to sit here and receive and believe that God loves me and he's not withholding anything. And you are not going to get me to do something to work for what Jesus has already worked for, paid for, provided. That's how I talk back. See what I'm saying? I don't go do because the devil tells me to do. Hey, you haven't read your Bible. Hey, Melissa, you're doing a Facebook Live and you haven't read your Bible this morning. Perfect. Exactly. Isn't the word in our heart? If the word is in my heart, then can you and I teach and evangelize and encourage and edify somebody without going and pulling up a scripture on Google? Well, let me go pull this thing up. So I can go do and give. Isn't the word already written in your heart, ladies? Don't you have enough word in your heart to know that you can share right now? So back to the woman with the issue of blood. In all three accounts, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Interesting. I'm not going to go through all the details of the woman with the issue of blood, but I want to give credit to my sister. I'm going to reach out to this young woman. She's a young black woman. She has a, a website called The Faith Space. And her name, her name is Abra Kadabra, something like Abra Kadabra. Let me find her name. I'll list her name because I'm going to give her credit for this article. But here it is. But she said some interesting things. So I want to give her credit for this. And then I'm just going to come in and, and add because I want to show you how I've been able to stay healed, get healed, receive healing, and continue on with more and more and more healing. Healing is in the mind. She says, Woman's from the, uh, the, uh, the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew 9, Mark 5, Luke 8. They give the same story, different accounts. Woman with the issue of blood. It happens in Capernaum during, during, uh, near the city of Galilee. Jesus was teaching them when he approached a man, etc., etc. Anyway, the crowd he was teaching went with him. As he moved along, the crowd got even thicker to the extent that he was almost being suffocated. But while he was on that mission, a woman in the crowd was seeking to be delivered. Why didn't she was seeking to be delivered and healed? Let me tell you something. Deliverance and healing are the same thing. Did you know in every account of the Bible, when it talks about Mary Magdalene, it says Mary Magdalene was cured of seven demons. It doesn't say delivered. Go read the Berean, the Amplified, the King James, the New King James. It says Mary Magdalene was cured of seven demons, not delivered. You know why? Because vicariously, when you're cured, you've been delivered. And when you've been delivered, you've been cured. It's the same word interchange. But isn't that fascinating that Jesus used the word cured in reference to Mary Magdalene's demons? You know why he used that word? Come on, let's talk about it. It wasn't that she just got delivered from the demons, but every demon had caused some kind of disease in her body. Remember, when you're a prostitute, you have STDs. You have complications from miscarriages. Think about abortions back then. They didn't have Planned Parenthood things like that. So as a prostitute, imagine that there's no birth control. So imagine the filth and the disgust and the shame and the self-rejection and the self-loathing and the disease and the sickness and everything else in her cervix, in her womb, in her body. Think about that. Just think about it, right? And then there were not sanitary conditions back then. So think about all the diseases because the Bible doesn't say she got delivered. So imagine what she got cured from, cured from seven demons. Do you know that one demon can bring in many sicknesses? One demon is not just one sickness. A demon can bring in several sicknesses. Let me, let me give you an example. Fornication, fornication. That's a sin, that's a spirit, but it can lead to what? STDs, abortion, do you see how these demons hook up together and they cause you to sin more and more and they add more disease? Fornication out of marriage can bring in STDs. Each one of those is a spirit because they're all different. The STDs can lead you to unwanted pregnancy and things like that and then you end up with abortion. So I just won't want you to think that it was just one. Demons work in networks. They work collectively. There's big clumps of things that happen. That's how diseases work, right? Well, we did your blood work and we found that your liver is off, your kidneys off. Because of that, this is happening and this is happening. See, everything's connected. It's not just one thing. 
Everything's connected spiritually, physically, emotionally. So anyway, um, the meaning of the issue of blood, because I thought this was interesting. The crowd he was teaching went with him. Okay, the woman, the meaning of issue of blood refers to a woman's disease, which might have been, might have been gynecological, specifically caused her to bleed from her womb, lasting 12 long years. So it wasn't her period. She wasn't having a long period. She wasn't having a complicated period. This was an addition. This was an addition. So her journey, of course, you know, took her to every doctor she knew, looking for every cure, whether legitimate or not. And scripture said she was broke because she sent all her money. So now these demons of sickness have caused lack and poverty. And then all the witch doctors she went to. Can you imagine how many spirits she had from all the witch doctors? She didn't go to Luke, a medical doctor, and you even have to be careful there because there's witchcraft working in Western medicine, in Eastern medicine, in Chinese medicine, in Ayurvedic medicine, see, in holistic medicine. Don't be thinking, well, I don't do Western medicine, I go holistic. I've done a whole teaching, go look at the definition of holistic. Go look at the symbolism behind holistic. Go look at the modalities behind holistic. So imagine she went to all the Western doctors, then she tried holistic doctors, then she tried Ayurvedic doctors, then she tried Chinese medicine doctors, and then she went for chiropractic and acupuncture and Reiki and she did all of that. Imagine how super loaded Double-minded, Amanda, exactly. Imagine how super loaded she was with demons. Come on, let's think about it. Because if we're going to get healed, we have to know what we're doing. And there's nothing doing, meaning we have to take a, a look to see what we're coming in agreement with. Like there are mindsets that I'm not going to do Western medicine. I'm going to come into agreement and conform this lofty imagination, this vain imagination on the fact that natural medicine is my God. Natural medicine is my healer. That's a belief that will kill you. God will not compete. He's the only healer in your life. And God will not compete and his glory will not compete against your Reiki master, against Dr. Oz, against Dr. Axe, against that Instagram guru and influencer who has you on multiple diets, doing a lot of green smoothies and a lot of green drinks. See, we are bowing and submitting every time we are doing something that is not out of the discernment and wisdom of God. We are submitting to whoever they are submitting to. You're not looking at an Instagram influencer and saying, oh, she's so cute and she's so knowledgeable. Look how amazing she is. Did you research her? Did you see where she got her anointing? Could be demonic. Her methodology? Or are we just out there buying these things and saying, oh, I want to follow her. Look, she looks great. She has a great body. She lost 50 pounds. See, we're looking carnally for spiritual things, and this is why we can't hear the word of the Lord. And God is not going to share his glory. He says, you choose who you want to heal you. Do you want to put your eggs in the basket of Western medicine, Eastern medicine, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine? You get to choose because I've given you free will. But understand, wherever you put your hope and trust, wherever you put your hope and trust, and they're not going to heal you permanently and perfectly, and they're also not going to be able to promise you that it's not going to come back. Jesus was the only one who was able to heal the woman with the issue of blood permanently, and the issue never came back. Jesus was the only one able to heal anybody, and it never came back. That is permanent freedom. That is not dependency on, I better take this, go there, and do this, and do this, and do this, and do this. Because the enemy says, hey, you're not doing, you're not doing, you're not taking, you're not drinking, you're not eating. Do you know that the enemy will put you under the law with your diet? Do you know that the enemy will put you under the law with anything he can put you under the law with? And here's what it looks like. A scheduled reg regimen. I'm going to wake up every morning and the first thing I do is I have a glass of water. Then the second thing I do is I take my supplement. Then the third thing I do, do you know you're already under the law and you've already stepped out of grace? Do you know that anytime you have a regimen that is not rooted in the Lord, that you have already put yourself under a law and now grace has a very hard time operating for you. Isn't that amazing? I want you to think about this. So this woman with the issue of blood, if we continue reading, and we're going to finish up in, in a few minutes, maybe like 10 minutes, okay? So give us 10 minutes, so let's keep going. As, as soon as she received healing, Jesus stopped dead in his tracks and said, who touched me? He said the woman was both afraid and ashamed to come forward. But it, can you imagine she gets healed? 
and she feels afraid and ashamed. That's how messed up she was mentally. Can you imagine that she was so messed up mentally that she felt bad for getting healed? That's how mind controlled she was by the enemy. He even was telling her, if you get healed, I want you to feel bad about it. Isn't that crazy? That's how mentally ill she was. Who in their right mind that does not have mental illness would ever feel ashamed or guilty or afraid of being healed? That's how much shame she had. That's how much fear she had. She had so much shame from her condition for 12 years that when she got healed, she still had that shame. She had so much fear over 12 years that that fear manifested. That is mental illness. Can you believe it? That's how severely, severely infected she was, not just physically, but with shame and fear and all of these other things. Ever think about that? Let's keep going. She came forward. Jesus gave her his attention. She explained everything that happened to her. Jesus responded, telling her, your faith. Now, I want you to think about this. She was a radical risk taker. I'm going to put the article down. I just got a couple of notes from that. I'm not going to go in what made her unclean according to Levitical law, but basically in a nutshell, anytime a woman was bleeding, whether it was menstrually, she had to separate herself while she was bleeding menstrually. This woman had to separate herself. She was a lunatic. She had a spirit of lunacy. Imagine living by yourself for 12 years in a cave. She couldn't be around anybody. A woman who was under a menstrual cycle could only be around, had to be away from family. She couldn't sit on chairs they sat on. The chair would be unclean. The bed wouldn't be unclean. She'd have to sleep separately, sit separately, eat separately while she was on her menstrual cycle. Imagine how emotionally heavy that is in the book of Leviticus. Now imagine a woman who's bleeding profusely way beyond her period and how lonely she is because she can't be around anybody for 12 years. So she's talking to herself. Remember that movie, Ladies Castaway, where Tom Hanks goes to this island, he gets shipwrecked, a plane crashes, and he's on this island by himself for a few years and he goes mentally ill. You know that people, that's why they put him in solitary confinement. Do you know that's one of the most aggressive forms of punishment in our prison system is not beating and whipping with, with what Jesus went through, it's solitary confinement. Because when you are in solitary confinement, except when you have the faith of Paul, see, Paul had it different. Paul was delivered and healed. He could be in solitary confinement in prison and write the epistles. John could be in solitary confinement because he was delivered and healed and write the book of Revelations. But someone who's not healed and delivered, it's very lonely. It's very lonely. People don't understand you. How many people do you know that don't understand you? Thief of joy, exactly. How many people don't understand you when you're sick? They don't get it. And then you feel kind of like, well, I don't want to tell him that there's this big mind boogie thing. So imagine this woman with the issue of blood is totally mentally ill. She's been by herself. Think about you being by yourself for 12 years. And when you do see someone, they spit, throw rocks, call you a whore. So imagine the accuser. See, we think we're going through a lot. Imagine the accuser. Imagine what they, how they are looking at her with disgust. You know, they want to kill people like that. See, they can actually stone them. See, there's a spirit of murder already on her, not premature death. She had that from the issue of blood. See how these demons work? Premature death, then a spirit of murder. People wanting to kill her, throw rocks and do all this stuff. So imagine to the point she got to, but here's what's so remarkable. So I'm going to close with a couple of things because this has been my secret sauce for healing. Okay. The woman had to take a risk, first of all, and she had to give God center stage for every decision regarding her health. It might not be your health. It might be your money. But there are things that we are coming into agreement with that are not giving God central stage for major decisions in our life. We're trying to work it out of the flesh. We're trying to reason, we're trying to, we're getting all convoluted with our own decision over what we're supposed to do with our money and our health and, you know, a challenge, a difficulty, something like this. And we are not fully submitting that to the Lord. The Lord wants all or nothing. 
He said, forsake everything, forsake opinions of what people think, forsake an image that you think you need to give to the world. I need you to forsake everything mentally, emotionally, and physically. I need you to forsake everything getting in the way of me helping you to become healed. Self-absorption, self, selfishness, all of these things that we are doing, we're actually working against the thing God wants us to do. When he said, forsake everything and follow me, he wasn't saying, hey, it's my way or the highway. He was saying, the reason I need you to forsake everything is because you are being inundated and distracted by things that are keeping you sick. And Melissa, I need you to forsake YouTube. I need you to forsake the Dr. Oz show. I need you to forsake your supplement regimen. I need you to forsake CVS. I need you to delete your doctors out of your phone. The only thing I want on this phone is the word of God in the Bible app. I need you to forsake everything. Can you do it? Well, my doctor, but what if it gets really bad? What if it gets really bad and I can't do it? Then you haven't forsaken all. God is asking you to make the mental decision. Then he will help you make the physical decision. God needs you to make the mental decision. Your sister here, your sister here, Amanda, almost died. She's right here. Ask her. She's your sister. And God asked her to do the same thing he asked me. Forsake it all. He's asked me to forsake a lot. I fought him on so many things, and guess what? I'm 58 and wish I wouldn't have fought him so hard. I don't have regret. I'm just saying, man, when I was 42, I wish I wouldn't have forsaken what he said. See? It has been a long journey for me to understand healing and freedom. And I'm going to recommend that if the Lord is telling you to forsake something, and to give it up for a season, for a time, or forever, or forever, then give it up. I had to forsake the gym. Can I go to the gym? Yes. But why I was going to the gym was sinful. Why I was taking supplements was sinful. Why I was a vegan was sinful. Why I was a vegetarian was out of vanity. Why I was doing what I was doing was out of vanity, vain imaginations, and I was sick, sick, sick. And then the Lord one day challenged me. He said, open up that supplement closet in your kitchen. He said, do you trust me? And I said, Lord, of course I do. <laughs> How many of us say we trust the Lord and we have no idea what it means to trust the Lord? He said, open up that vitamin cabinet. Okay, I opened it up. Guess what happens? He shows me my altar of idolatry. Every statue given to a new age doctor. This, this supplement, and, and he showed me my shrine of vitamins. Guess what I did? Fell to the ground horrifically in shame, just like the woman with the issue of blood. And God says, no, he picked me up. He said, don't feel like that. I'm just bringing something to your attention. He said, you really don't trust me. Do you know how embarrassing it is? Like, see, I'm the woman with the issue of blood. I don't want to admit that I don't trust God, but remember when I started this video, what did I say? If we do not admit... If we do not say, you know what, Lord, I don't trust you. You know what, Lord, I have too many numbers in my contact. You know what, I'm doing things this way. If we don't be, are, we're not honest with God, he cannot help us. We have to come to the end of a story that we've sold ourselves to believe. We have to come to the end of an image we want to protect. We have to come to the end of ourselves. We have to come to the end of self-righteousness. We have to come to the end of thinking that we know it when we don't know anything. We have to come to the end. That has to be crucified on a cross. And I told the Lord, no, I don't trust you. I didn't say, well, I trust you a little bit. Well, I trust you with my marriage. Truth be told, I didn't trust him with my marriage either. Didn't trust him with my daughter. Didn't trust him that he could deliver my daughter. Didn't trust him with my money. Didn't trust him with me. I didn't trust him. If I'm being totally honest with you, I, I trusted him at 10% with my health, 2% with my finances. So I was scoring a big fat F on trust. But when I gave up that one thing and was able to trust him for my health, every other area became easy. He picked the hardest one first. Oh, did he pick the hard one? I wish he would have picked like, you know, do you trust me to take care of your dogs while you're at the grocery store? Right? That's like easy. 
But he said, I'm going to go into the deepest part of your idolatrous heart. I'm going to go into the deepest part of your idolatrous heart. And I'm going to pull out the idol. And I'm going to show it to you. It's not a graven image. It's not a golden calf. It's a bottle. It's a bottle. You know, Melissa, here's your graven image. Here's where you put your money. Here's where you're putting your trust. And then he showed me the people producing the supplement and how many other doors I had opened to the new age. But here's what was so awesome about God. Through that, he never whispered those lies. It's your fault you did this and you're not doing enough of this and you've done everything wrong. He said, because you have submitted to me, I'm now going to share my truth with you because you're ready to hear my truth and now you're going to go free. He didn't get mad. He wasn't frustrated. He didn't say you should know better. Would you do that to your child? Mom, I'm sick. You should have worn your coat. I told you to wear your coat. I told you it was raining and cold. You should have worn your coat. He didn't do that because that's an abusive father. He said, you are finally ready to hear the truth because I had to let go of every idol that gatekeep. They were gatekeepers over my mind. When I threw away this supplement, I had to go get a big bag. This is how I got myself healed. It wasn't getting rid of supplements. Don't misunderstand me as I come to a close. Don't look at it and say, okay, I have to throw all my supplements to get healed. I never said that. I said, we have to submit the hardest area of our life, the heart, not the easiest, submit the hardest area of our life, not the easiest. The woman with the issue of blood was a risk taker. She had to submit the hardest part of her life. The part that had created such a stronghold to hold in her that she was actually mentally ill. God didn't say, give me the easy thing. He said, let's go all or nothing. As she got out of that cave and she walked, can you imagine the mental torment? Because you feel safe in your cave. When you're sick, you're safe in your regimen. You're safe in your routine. I have control. I know how to make myself feel better. I know what I need to take. I know what I need to do. You know, that's your cave. Everybody has their own cave. Do you know that women are living in their own caves of misery? Everybody has their cave, like the woman with the issue of blood. Everybody's afraid to take a risk and come out of their cave of darkness. She came out of the cave. She said, you know what? I have to do something so radically different that I'm going to take the biggest risk of my life. She had to leave her menstrual pads. You know what they used back then? Cloths. You know the cloths that they used that they would put over you like this, like over your head? She had cloths tied to her belt. And she'd get this long cloth. I'm going to give you a visual. Not this cute pad that stays with an adhesive strip. You're my sisters in Christ. We have to go here. Long, long, long cloths. She'd roll them up, do what she needed to do. Can you imagine taking these things out, not having a place to dispose them like you and I have all the comforts because we're so comfortable in our Christian walk? Not the waste basket, not the tissue to wrap it up. I'm being graphic because we need to go a little bit graphic so we can understand what she did. See, we don't really understand what she did. We don't understand that as she's crawling, the bleeding's becoming worse, not better. Many of you and many of us are trying to crawl out of a cave and we expect it's gonna get better. See, in the cave, she had all her rags. She had the hot water, she had her rags. She had built herself a cave of control. Come on, who am I speaking to? She built herself a cave of control. How many of us have caves of control where she felt comfortable and she knew exactly how to control her situation? She didn't want to leave her cave, her comfort zone. My wraps are here. It's hot. I'm going to be walking. What are people going to think? And in that cave, she left all of her charms, all of her new age bracelets, all of her magnets, all of her crystals, everything that the witch doctors gave her. And she crawled by herself. 
When you are crawling for your health, there are going to be attacks. How about the attack of fear? Lord, I'm going to give you this, but I'm in so much fear to give it all to you. I've only given you percentages, but if I'm going to leave my cave, I have to give it all to you. I have to give you my entire thing. So she leaves the cave and imagine just the fear and torment. Imagine that. Just think about it for a second, how scary it is to give up everything for the Lord. Then she's crawling and she doesn't really see any people, but she's getting attacked. Turn around, go back, go back. What happens if you run out of claws? What happens if Jesus is not there when you go to the center? What if he's not there? You're taking a big risk. You're going to go 10 miles into the city because she had to live way outside the city. Miles. Miles. Now remember, she's in the hot sun walking, trusting God, bleeding, and bleeding out. Because when you have, when you have issues of blood, you're supposed to stay still. Right? Your circulation causes a lot more bleeding. So she's walking and the blood's getting worse. Your health issues are getting worse. The ability to trust God is getting worse. And you're walking and she's like, oh my gosh, I only have four cloths left. I'm not gonna make it, the enemy. You're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it. Turn around, turn around, go back, go to that doctor, go to that urgent care, go! Turn around and go back. Can you imagine what she has to fight through? It's life or death because no one's going to come to touch her because she's unclean. Unclean women, they'd leave on the side of the road. They wouldn't even bury him. They weren't even a fit for burial. She could have died right there like Amanda. And she's walking. She's like, Lord, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And she's walking because she knows she is convincing herself. She is saying, I have heard. I have heard. She didn't read the word. She didn't know a single Bible scripture. She just said, I heard about a man. I heard about a man. Many of us know scripture, and we don't even believe that scripture. And she knew no scripture. She just heard about a man. She heard about the great physician. She heard about the great physician. She had no word. She had no anchor scripture. She had nothing except three cloths left. That's all she had is three cloths left. And she had heard about a man that could potentially help her. Now she comes into the crowds and the crowds are smelling this dried up in the sun, these menstrual cloths, dried up, caked on, full of cloths. Gosh, Melissa, this is really graphic. You know what? So is abortion. And the reason women continue to commit abortion is because they don't know the graphicness and the gravity and the depravity of it. See, we need to understand these things a little better. So we don't just, we, we have to understand the depths of some of these things so we can really make the right decision. See, no one explains that and shows what happens to a baby during abortion. Because if they did, no one would do it. See, we have to go here because we're daughters of God. And we have to understand these deep truths because these deep truths will help us to go free. So she's coming into the town and she has these cloths full of clots, full of clots. And who knows what else? Infection. Let's talk about abscesses. Let's talk about infections. Let's talk about tumors. And imagine the smell of all of this. And the town is going, and they see her, and now she's full of blood. She's run out of all her cloths. She doesn't have a single cloth left. And she said, I hope he's here. I hope he's here. She's not crossing her finger. She's crossing this in her heart. I hope he's here. I hope he's here. She doesn't even have enough cloths. And she's probably bled out about 80% to make it back home. And she takes the biggest risk of her life. And all the accusers start throwing rocks, calling her a whore. See, that's what the devil does when we're trying to get healed. Look what you've done. See, he will always disqualify you. Didn't we start the Facebook Live with this? Doesn't the devil say, look what you've done. Remember the two beliefs. You're not healed because of what you've done or what you haven't done. Hey, Kelly, 
You're not healed because of what you've done. You went to all those witch doctors. You didn't trust me or what you haven't done. And then all the other accusers, all those people, those people can be doctors that are talking to you. Amanda, if you don't get back in here, if you don't take that supplement, Amanda, if you don't do that, you're going to die. All those people that were shouting out that had their opinions, doctors, how about lab work? Lab work will curse you. It doesn't even have to say anything. The number on the lab work will curse you and give you doubt. And all she's doing is looking for truth. Where's the truth? Where's the truth? I need the truth. And all these accusers, now the people, now the people. But she crawls her way and she makes her way. And I want you to think about it because you heard that. The crowd is here and she makes her way and everybody's looking at her with disgust. And she has this stench. And you know what she does? She said, if I made it out of my cave, if I got out of my cave, and if I walked 13 miles, and if I ran out of cloths, and if I'm bleeding out, then I have nothing to lose. I don't have anything to lose. And she goes like this, I have nothing to lose. <sighs> and she touches Jesus and says, I've already let, lost everything. I have nothing to lose. And she reaches out and says, I have nothing to lose. And because she said, I have nothing to lose, she was healed on the spot. That's how she became healed. She left the world. She left the cave. She left the fear. She left all of those things that she had suffered mentally, physically, and emotionally with. She trusted through everything that she went through. Every demon in hell was after her to go back, to send her back to that cave. She was going to die anyway. She was on her deathbed. She said, I'm either going to die in the cave in closing. I'm either going to die in a hospital. I'm going to die in hospice. or I'm gonna die trusting Jesus. And she made her decision to forsake everything. And she healed herself. She healed herself because she forsook everything. Everything that she left, she said, I'm ready to give that up. I'm sure halfway through she wanted to turn around, but she didn't. I'm going to challenge you and I as I close. I want you to think about this word and the intensity, the description, the details of this word, because that's how I got healed. See, I had to leave my cave. I was trapped in my home for two years and I had to leave my cave. And every doctor at Mayo Clinic said, don't leave your cave. You're going to go crazy. You're going to go crazy. Don't leave your cave. Don't leave your cave. But I knew if I didn't leave my cave and search for truth, I didn't leave my cave and know the Bible yet. I wasn't even in Bible college. I just knew that if I didn't leave the cave and forsake everything, I wouldn't have been healed. And God matched my truth. He said, daughter, you're just learning about the Bible. I was 40. You've been a Christian, not a believer. So I'm gonna give you a really quick lesson. He said, I'm gonna give you a lesson. You walk out of your cave at 2% and I'll match you 98. Give me 2%, the faith of a mustard seed, and I'll make up the other 98. I got healed from that time in my life, and now my whole goal is to learn more progressively the true, the true loving and benevolent word of God which has actually allowed me to stay and maintain my freedom. This is what it takes. This is my story. So as I close, I want to ask you a question. 
many of you are in a cave. And in that cave, it's comfortable. You get to control things. You haven't really fully trusted the Lord. We all have a cave that we're trying to leave. Let's admit it. What is your cave? Kelly, exactly. What is your cave? So let me, let me future pace you. The mosquitoes make it to Arizona. Is your cave going to be to stay in your home? Come on, Kelly. Come on, Ashley. Come on, Jennifer. You're going to stay in your cave like everybody is on the East Coast? Mosquitoes coming. Bill Gates is pouring mosquitoes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Is our cave going to be, I'm going to stay in, go under lockdown? We can say, I'd never do that. I'd never take the chip. But people took the vaccine. When monkeypox comes, we going to hide in a cave? When the devil attacks us with sickness, are we going to hide in a cave? You know what's in that cave? Google. I'm going to go to Google. Let me go see what the Instagram influencer says. Let me go to join all these Facebook groups. That's our cave of man's wisdom. And it's dark in that cave and there's no healing, only confusion. The enemy's about to put us in caves. It might not be the mosquitoes on the Northeast, but it's gonna be something. Do you have any fear of what's coming? We shouldn't. We should be so darn strong that when the mosquitoes come out, I'm out preaching and evangelizing and laying my hands on the sick. Come on, who wants to be out there with me? When those mosquitoes come and that next thing comes, are you gonna stay in a cave? Or are you gonna lock arms with me and we're gonna get out there and we're gonna do what the Bible has commanded us to do? Daughters of God are not supposed to live in caves. We're gonna be living on streets of gold in mansions. We don't have a cave mentality. We don't have a fear mentality. It's all or nothing, ladies. It's all or nothing. I told Amanda, Amanda, you are so much like me and you are gonna be healed like me. This is your season of all or nothing. Is this your season of all or nothing? Tell the Lord, I'm going all in. Tell him. Send this video to women that you love. It is time to go all in. It's all or nothing. Let me pray for us and we're gone. You're welcome, Jennifer. Awesome. Lord, show, show each of these women, including myself, our caves, our cabinets, our closets. How many ridiculous people were collecting toilet paper? That's such a representation of an unclean spirit during the COVID. We were collecting toilet paper. What a representation of cowardness. What does toilet paper represent? Why do we need it? Are we going to be collecting toilet paper? Yep. What are you going to be collecting when this next shutdown happens? I hope you're going to be collecting Bibles. I hope you're going to be collecting anchor scriptures and revelation. See, when they do this, I'm going out. I'm not going in. Are you going in or are you going out? It depends how big your cave is. Let's be honest. If you have a very big cave, you probably won't go out. But if we can get rid of every cave and everything that is in the way of us trusting God, what is it? Renee, your kids, exactly. Exactly. Caves represent control. My way, I'm not ready to release this to you yet completely. See? 
And Renee, let me tell you the Lord will work, how the devil will work against you. Mosquitoes make it to Arizona. And what do we do? Kids, stay in. Stay indoors. I'm going to control you. I don't trust God. Let's go buy some DEET spray. Let's go buy some citronella candles. I'm not saying we don't take precautions. I'm saying if we can't trust God for mosquitoes against our kids, how can we trust them for their salvation? God has given you all power to trample on scorpions and snakes. Remember what I told you at the beginning, a mosquito bites you, the blood of Jesus. Let them suck on that blood because you are covered and sealed with the blood of Jesus. Let your belief in the blood of Jesus kill that mosquito. When a mosquito comes after me, it's going to die. I'm not going to die. It's going to die. Is that the kind of faith we have? Is that the kind of revelation we have? You die. I'm not going to die. You die. In the name of Jesus. So identify your cave. Father, help us identify any cave of control. What is a cave? Something we don't want to let go of. Something we are trying to manage, micromanage, and control. What is that? And are we ready to forsake putting our fleshly, worldly, working by work hands on that cave? I'm done like the woman with the issue of blood. I'm not controlling this. I'm not doing all this stuff. Father, show us in this teaching exactly what is hiding in our cave. What we're trying to do in that cave. We all have them. The Lord's dealing with me on one. I've gotten rid of many, many caves. My caves have gotten smaller. But uh, the Lord is contending me, with me with one more cave. One more. See? So, Father, I thank you for this time, this incredible Labor Day weekend. You know what Labor Day means? Freedom! Labor Day, freedom. That's what this day represents. Not what the world says it represents. Labor Day represents freedom. So if it represents freedom, then let's give God the glory for Labor Day because of the freedom he gives us in his son, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for the anointing on this truth. The anointing. Father, let's get out of our cave in the end days and go out and do exactly what we are supposed to do as your daughters, representing your power and your authority and your truth and your freedom and your healing in the name of Jesus. And I declare these things and seal them over every woman who is here on Labor Day seeking the freedom that comes from the truth. I pray over each of them in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the privilege of being able to share your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, ladies, I love you tons. Have a beautiful, beautiful weekend of freedom. And we'll see you Wednesday night.